well to um, council delivery update. We have Adele Gritton and Kate Swan from South Cams. Hello, Adele. Hello, great. Thank you, Councillor Handley. Um, yeah, good evening, everybody. My name's Adele Gritton and I'm Head of Economic Development and Commercial Investments uh, here at the Council. And I'm here this evening in my capacity as Lead Officer for the Enterprise Zone Development at Northstone. And I'm here alongside my colleague, Kate, who you'll see shortly, who is the overall project management lead on the North Sea advisory work we've been doing with external project consultants over the past few months. Uh, AR Urbanism is a name some of you will be familiar with, and you've seen them give presentations at previous forums. Uh, Peter Campbell is our head of housing, and he is the senior responsible officer for council development at North Sea as a whole. Again, many of you will be familiar with him from previous forums. But uh, he's having a very well-deserved rest, hopefully sipping cocktails on a beach right now. So Kate and I will be giving you the general update this evening for the programme as a whole. And in case you're wondering why you haven't seen me before, I'm relatively new to the council and certainly new to the, the North Star role. So I've been involved in this project for the past five to six months specifically. So firstly, a brief update on where we are with the Enterprise Zone. Uh, I think it's fair to say we've carried out extensive consultation with both residents and businesses alike over the last past nine months in particular. And we've done that via a combination of online surveys, workshops and interim updates given to this forum as part of our client advisory work in general. So if you have attended some of these forums previously, you will have seen our colleagues and consultants, Ricardo Babise, um, give an early vision of the master plan for the site. And more recently, you will have seen quite a bit about the exemplar green credentials we're aspiring to and how that plan has evolved over the past five months. Uh, last autumn, around October time specifically, we engaged an economic consultancy called PRD. Uh, they're part of the wider external AR urbanism client advisory team. And they recently, in the last two weeks, provided us with their report on the economic viability of suggested designs and they're undertaking further financial modelling and appraisal work for us, which will help us determine the best route forward to bring the site to bear. Based on that draft report that we received a couple of weeks ago, we're now stress testing further some of those financial assumptions, including what the best delivery partner mechanism is and the potential impact, for example, on bringing the community centre and the local centre forward as separate projects versus part of the wider enterprise zone development in its entirety. We are clearly absolutely aware of the time critical imperative to deliver the community centre ASAP. And we are very, very aware of the lacking commercial and retail amenities across North Sea overall. And we understand the need to bring forward a local commercial centre soonest. So to speed that up as best we can, we are currently undertaking some very soft market testing to help us hone a de delivery partner brief ready for tender. And I'm sure many of you can appreciate just looking at the news every day, global economics have changed somewhat recently and there is clearly ongoing unprecedented disruption to global financial markets, supply chains, energy costs, etc. And all of these things factor into the mechanism and deal structure in terms of how any enterprise zone can and could be brought forward. So once our ongoing testing, evaluation and route to market work has concluded over the next couple of months, we'll then be much better informed as to how the scheme can be delivered overall, what the projected cost for delivery will be, the proposed parcel development phasing, and then we'll then be in a position to publicly update you and share the working master plan design further, which is currently in its pre-app phase. And obviously there will be ongoing community and resident engagement work as part of that. Again, our consultants AR Urbanism have presented at previous forums where we've shared some illustrative mock-ups um, and examples of our exemplar designs and Kate will show a quick video at the end to just summarise some of that too. Our aim is obviously to ensure that we give you an exemplar enterprise zone development that of course serves the business community provision, provision needs and amenities more generally, but also we really are aspiring to give you a best in class example of a modern green, integrated, attractive place in terms of placemaking. The Enterprise Zone has got to integrate with the tone, look, feel and vibe of the North Star community as it's evolving. It's got to be a place where businesses want to set up, where they want to scale and where they want to remain for the long run. North Stowe Enterprise Zone needs to be a shining example of a thriving business community and we want it to be a go-to incubator for talent and new ideas that's fully integrated into the overall narrative and vision for North Stowe. Put differently, we very much want the Enterprise Zone to be a living and breathing manifestation of North Stowe's healthy new town credentials, and we want it to be a leading light in terms of net zero sustainability. 
In my capacity as head of economic development, it's really crucial for me that the enterprise zone allows quality jobs to be brought forward, that it fosters and ignites ancillary economic impact via locally connected supply chains, and all whilst offering market competitive rents, best in class office or mid tech provision. That's why taking the time to get the master plan and crucially the financial model right is really imperative for the long term success and long term sustainability of the enterprise zone in its entirety. So essentially, we're at a stage where a detailed report on potential routes to market for delivery and associated cost implications will be presented to our district members, our councillors over the next couple of months. That report will contain the information they need as elected members to be able to decide on the preferred development route forward so that then a tender process can take place for a development or delivery partner in order to start bringing the site forward. North Stowe councillors are and will, of course, be able to continue to feed into that process. And there will also be both the formal mechanisms for public feedback, for example, by the planning process and, of course, an informal feedback mechanism as we continue a programme of community and business engagement. And to help us with that engagement phase, we have recently been successful in bidding for a Department of Leveling Up Housing Community Funding to devise a marketing and engagement platform, a portal essentially, which will help us to communicate and reach out to those businesses interested in basing themselves on the enterprise zone. So please continue to check our North Stowe digital engagement channels for details on the opportunities upcoming to feed into the evolving master plan. And of course, in due course, businesses can feedback with us and talk to us about the kinds of space they may be interested in taking up on the enterprise zone more broadly. Uh, and building on some of the points I've made, you know, the community centre and the local centre, we understand are clearly interlinked, linked to the enterprise zone. So we are currently carrying out soft market testing to understand if the inclusion of the community centre and or the local centre in the same contract as the enterprise zone would make the proposal more or less attractive to potential commercial development partners. Again, to reiterate, we, we completely recognise that community building should be delivered first before the rest of the site. But before we can definitively commit to that, we must conclude our wider financial appraisal work that's currently ongoing. And that process will be complete within the next couple of months with, as I said, Cabinet Council then asked to make a decision on the route to market based on the options that will be presented to them. Uh, just before I hand back to Kate, I did want to flag that, you know, the business team, as Councillor Carlo has been talking about, has been working with the uh, Town Council over recent months to support on all things market activity. It's great to see the 500 responses. It's great to be able to support with how you set up a market, um, as we've already heard, it's, it's not that straightforward when you have to think about permissions, management and all the health and safety aspects. And um, we are very pleased to be putting in £8,000 as part of the combined authority grant that we've received recently in order to get the market up and running. And that funding um, can be used for things like gazebo storage, insurance, advertising, etc. Um, while I recognise that a market is not a building with shops, clearly getting something together on a regular basis for local businesses to thrive and of course for local residents to be able to buy basic amenities is surely a good thing in the short term. So I'll take some questions at the end but before that I'll hand over to Kate my colleague who's going to update briefly on some of the individual projects. Kate. Um, sorry <laughs> my uh, my Computer was a bit slow on catching up there. Yeah, hello, um, everybody. I'm just going to give you a quick update on, first of all, on the Civic Hub. Um, so this is the landmark building in phase two of the town centre in North Stowe and will be designed to provide health library and community facilities. So we've commissioned an impressive and thorough piece of work from Civic and we're currently waiting for the final draft of this to come through. The report details extensive consultation that has taken place with healthcare, library and community organisations with a view to using this as a basis of the next de design phase. Um, we've appointed project managers to deliver the next phase and will continue to engage all stakeholders in that process. As soon as we receive the report, there'll be a series of internal discussions about funding, delivery mechanisms, and ultimately sign off processes for specification, blueprint and commitment to develop an operating model. It's very likely that we'll seek to award a design and build tender for construction 
around autumn 2022, so autumn this year, with a likely completion time of three years, and that will include both planning and construction. Unlike the sports pavilion where design work was carried out before tendering for the construction work, a design and build contractor will design the building in accordance with the specification from the blueprint that is based on the extensive consultation and advisory work undertaken to date. That contract will of course include seeking input from the community prior to seeking planning permission. While I can't give a definitive date or time for this in the sequence of events right now, that consultation process with the community would likely in earnest take place in sort of the first half of 2023. Uh, moving on to the pavilion, um, we've, with, with, we have tended for a construction partner to develop the sports pavilion. Um, this process is still live, so subject to a successful procurement and any relevant approvals, building work at the sports pavilion could start summer, autumn of this year. The build could take up to about 12 months to complete, and we are, of course, hopeful that delivery could or sort of would err on the earlier side of this scale. So before I hand over um, to, to Claire, I am just going to show you the video that um, Adele mentioned just um, about the uh, enterprise zone and local centre. So bear with me a second while I share my screen. Um, let's have a... Right, is that sharing? see not yet Kate not yet thank you let me just see what's gone on here bear with me a second I'm sorry about this everybody um right let me just see right apologies about this let me just start again has that come up yet Sorry, I'm having a few difficulties with getting this on my screen. Has that that's not come up yet, has I, it? We can we can see your home screen, I think. Yeah, oh, apologies about this. What I'll do is just let me just. It's showing. Sure <laughs> it did work earlier, and it's not wanting to play ball. What I'll do is um, bear with me a second. Um, right. I'm just going to stop sharing for just a second. What I'll do is let me hand over to, to Claire Gibbons, the Growth Manager Communities, um, so she can update you on, um, on her part of the meeting. And I'll just have a go in the background and see if I can sort out this video to share with you all. So thank you very much for listening and I'll hand over to Claire now. So thank you very much, Kate, uh, and hopefully I can fill in some of the information that's being requested from residents. I've seen lots of the questions pop up in the chat there, and I'll try and absorb as many as I can into uh, what I'm about to say. Um, part of our learning from earlier developments such as Camborne was the um, the need for community facilities to be ready and available from the very first stages of the development. And this we managed to achieve through the delivery of the community wing as part and parcel of Pathfinder Primary School, which was available for use uh, from the very first residents arriving back in 2017. However, and this was always going to be the case, the time has now come given the growth of that primary school and the requirement for additional classroom space to accommodate their growing role, we need to hand back the community wing and convert it into the classrooms that it was always intended to be. Now they're going to need those uh, spaces back towards the end of the summer term this year in order to prepare them ready for September this year, September 2022. So necessarily this has meant us looking to uh, find the, the right quantity of accommodation needed 
such that we can have continuity of service for the statutory provision that's developed, uh, delivered from the community wing, such as the child and family centre services, um, and also the library, and, and the meeting space that it uh, provides for a plethora of community groups, which have been very successful in locating there and developing the great things that they're offering the community at North Stow. So we've been working really, really hard behind the scenes, admittedly, so you will not uh, have uh, had, you know, much evidence perhaps that this has been going on, but I can assure you that work has been progressing in conjunction with my colleagues at the County Council, in discussion with North Stow Secondary College and my colleagues um, uh, there within CMAT, Andy Daly, who you uh, heard from earlier, and we're looking for additional space uh, in order to supplement what will be available on those dual use areas of North Stow Secondary College, some of the pictures of which you saw earlier this evening. So we have been looking at that as a collective, so trying to find a solution which best meets the needs of all of those community groups, their storage needs included, which again is one of the comments that's come up um, within the questions that we've received this evening, in order that we can work out for all of the, our users what their needs are and how they could be accommodated. We've evaluated a range of options and opportunities and only today we've had a decision from council which means we can move forward in acquiring some additional space at North Stowe which will service those needs we feel to best effect. Now if you haven't been involved in those conversations to date, we will be speaking to you if you're a WING user. So don't, don't be concerned, we will be in touch with you very shortly. We're still at a very sensitive stage in this process. Um, we have not uh, completed that process. I wish we could give you more details tonight. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to do that, but just as soon as I have them, I'll be communicating them to the town council and through our North Stowe Community Facebook page so more details will be available soon. Now, I don't know whether Kate is ready yet with her presentation, which I'm sure will encompass the delivery of the phase one community center, but I'd just like to touch on a couple of the questions that I've seen come into the chat, if that's okay, uh, Councillor Handley. I'm, so, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Claire? I, I'd just like to deal with a couple of the questions uh, whilst, whilst okay. I've still got... Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yes, I, I think it's a good idea that you do, actually, because uh, otherwise we might get into muddle. Yeah. OK, so regarding the um, one, one of our questioners rightly pointed out that there were two consulting rooms integrated within the community wing with a view to accommodating health services. Now, they're not routinely used as consulting rooms, but community health teams do work very closely with the Child and Family Centre and their services, for example. So health services are in fact delivered from the wing, just not in, not in the way that may have been anticipated way back in the day when the wing was specified. Um, health services, of course, will be accommodated within the civic hub. And we're working closely with health colleagues at the clinical commissioning group to work out the specification required to accommodate them within that building. And of course, we're working um, uh, constantly and consistently with the CCG to ensure that medical provision before that date is adequately provided for. And I know some questions have, uh, are directly related to that. And uh, I intend to invite the CCG along to the next community forum so that they can answer those themselves directly as they have the statutory responsibility for delivering health services to the required standard. Uh, is um, Kate available now to, to take up where she left off? I don't think um, we're having a joy, Claire, are we? <laughs> hi, right, okay, let me just have a, another go at sharing this. So bear with me a second. I don't absolutely know why it isn't, so. I think we'll give it one more go, Kate, and if, sorry, if this doesn't work, we will just share the link and we'll put it on social media later in tomorrow, so you will be able to access it. Apologies, technology fails us again. Uh, 
Right, can you see that? Not yet. No. I think I think what we'll do is we will share the link with you all because this is hot off the press this afternoon so it's only just been done so I really apologize about the the tech difficulties with sharing um, this with you all this evening but we'll share the link um, and make it available so that you you will be able to access it and and have a look so apologies for that. Are you able to talk to us about it or is that um oh she's gone <laughs> yeah, I, I think Councillor Handley, it was simply a sort of minute and a half, two minute montage, Kate, showing okay. oh, all right. what we're yes. doing so far. So it's really a fast whiz yeah. through to show that the significant amount of work that clearly has happened in the 11 months since we've uh, been in possession of the, the six parcels. And, and I just wanted to conclude, uh, Councillor Handley, by, by saying and echoing some of the things that Claire said, you know, clearly it's not always visible to the public, the, the amount of work that clearly does have to go on behind the scenes and not least due to the sort of financial modeling side of things in these ongoing sort of very difficult times that I've mentioned there is so much that is happening in terms of planning both formal planning and internal planning scoping project management operational work financial evaluation that we don't want to come too preemptively or too prematurely to this forum with you know over promising and under deliver we would rather be completely honest and candid with you about where we are in the process um, I'm completely confident, though, as I said, that within the next couple of months, um, Council Cabinet will see a paper with recommendations about how we bring it to bear. And we should be in a position to go out to procure a development partner within the latter half of this calendar year. Um, without going through the questions one by one, Councillor Handley, I do notice there is a, you know, someone, people, people would rightly like to pin us down on specific timings. I, I can't give a cast iron guarantee on that, but I think it would be fair to say that assuming we are going out with a development partner brief later this year and assuming we are entering into contract very late this year, early next year, it is not unreasonable to be expecting there to be build activity in late 23 into 24 with amenities, um, enterprise zone and local centre being available shortly thereafter. But I clearly do not want to commit or give a definitive timeline to that this evening, other than reiterating we completely recognise the need, the imperative and the fact that many of you have been waiting um, quite some time for this and we are we are on it and us working as quickly and as swiftly as we can to make sure that there are um, there is provision for you and we're also working hand in hand with our colleagues obviously at Homes England for the town centre aspect too so um, yeah we will keep updating you and um, please do keep talking to the council please keep talking to the town council and please do keep checking back on social media to see where we are in the process thank you can I you. ask you Adele um, I mean are you even able to give us an idea when you might be able to use a timeline <laughs> uh, because yeah. uh, that, that one one comment that's just popped up that you know without a time yeah. work plan you know people can't hold you hold the council accountable yeah and that's a completely fair point councillor handley so within the significant document that will be coming to cabinet over the next couple of months once that is approved and has gone through the various um, democratic channels internally um, and once we're in a position to go out to brief with the development partner, and once we've had various tender um, applications back with indicative timelines, and once we have then decided on the preferred partner, that's at the point at which we will be able to share more specific timelines. So I would hope towards the end of this calendar year, we would be in a process to update further with that, hopefully having procured a development partner. If not, we will be procuring imminently into um, early 2023. So I think that's probably the the most honest I can be at this stage, Councillor Handy. All right, thank you. Thank you, Adele. Now, what I'd like to do, um, I'm going to move on to the, the last presentation um, from, from the community team, um, but would, would you, Adele um, and Claire, um, look at the questions and rather than going through them all one by one, because there are some, there are some duplicate comments and duplicate questions uh, perhaps you could just come back and, and and answer them is that a fair thing to ask you to do Adele yeah no that's fine Claire and I will we'll talk on or offline and we'll figure out what we have and, and, then, and then yes once we finish the community update if you could come back and cover those off that would be really useful yep. okay sure. thank you 